Hey guys, bit of a change this week as all I've done recently is change AdBlue pumps so I thought I'd take you through what's actually involved in these Denox Tronic 2.2 pumps and how they operate. I know this might be irrelevant to some of you technicians who know the ins and outs of this system but for the rest of you I'm going to pull this to bits before I rebuild it and do a bit of explaining. Fitted to DAF, Euro 6 vehicles and many other brands of truck, this system was developed by Bosch. It has a life expectancy of about 20,000 hours before something fails, and from my experience, it's from AdBlue leakage or a pressure sensor fault, which I will show later. So, let's get into this. To start, we have the replaceable AdBlue fittings, the return from the dosing valve here, the inlet to the middle, and the outlet from the dosing valve. Both of these have filters in, and the return line has actually got a check valve in it for pressure buildup. To the right here, we have the AdBlue filter, and over to the left, we have our plug. To diagnose a system, you need to fully understand a system, so we best get this open. Inside the unit here we can see some corrosion, and this also gives us a clue to why it had failed. Inside here we have this protected track that distributes the power to the various components. Half of the flow control valve coil here, the AdBlue pump motor which operates this eccentric cam, the AdBlue pressure sensor and what I'd say is a fusible link for the heating element as the heating element is built into the pump filter housing itself. This is just a close up view of how the motor turns rotational movement into a linear operation which I'll explain about more later on. So let's whip this pressure sensor out. The pressure sensor comes out easily enough with just two bolts and very rarely gives issues from my own personal experience. Faults with this are usually power supply related. To disassemble the rest of this unit we're going to need to delve deeper into the workings of this so we best flip it over. With the back cover removed we can access the flow control valve and the other bolts holding the pump in. Yet again this looks like another resettable fuse used for the heater in this unit. This 4-2 flow control valve breaks down into different seals and components which is operated by this coil so we'll go through this on a diagram in just a second. With these four bolts now removed the flow control valve can be split away from the main pump body revealing the four ports and seals. This component physically switches the direction of the AdBlue over and here we have the plunger for the coil. To remove this it's just two bolts and our flow control valve assembly just lifts off out. Now for the diagram. Here we have AdBlue and it is drawn up to the diaphragm pump by the eccentric movement of the motor, through the 4-2 valve and off to the AdBlue dosing valve. The 9 bar of pressure is regulated by a restriction in the return line and a PWM signal to the AdBlue pump motor. This motor only runs in one direction so this is why we have those two seals on that small plate to swap the direction of flow over as seen in the next diagram which is for the recovery of AdBlue. Recovery is done by energising the coil next to the pump motor which pulls the other half of the 4-2 valve arm which in turn changes direction for the flow in the 4-2 valve allowing the AdBlue to return to the tank with the help of the closing of the AdBlue dosing valve which gets pulsed to clear the line of AdBlue rather than using compressed air like Denox Tronic 1 did. With these two bolts out now we're done in this side of the pump and we can go back into the other side. So if we flip this unit over, we can continue the strip down and carry out our fault identification. With the coil out, we can dig out the pump motor now and examine the membrane behind the diaphragm pump and 9 times out of 10, this is what you'll find. 
I've also got AdBlue here and this is the fault with the unit as it was unable to maintain pressure. This membrane serves two purposes. One, it acts like a compressor head gasket with valves opening and closing to the ports and two, it acts like a cylinder where it creates a void for the AdBlue to flow into. The cause of failure in this unit can be identified as wear and tear on this membrane, allowing a horizontal split to form and pass pressurised AdBlue into the casing, corroding the tracks and causing loss of pressure in the pump itself. Only thing left to do now is to cut out this metal track as it needs replacing, fit a full rebuild kit and this will make the pump as good as new. I hope you've enjoyed this teardown of failure identification video. If you have, let me know in the comments. If you've noticed anything that I've said wrong or described wrong, let me know and I'll catch you in the next one.